Hello, Brian Singer here. These are some of our larger stages in Vancouver. It's about a half a million square feet. It was outfitted out of a warehouse to be the largest soundstage in North America. It requires about 60 miles of cable to light and took about 300 workers, 300 carpenters, about six months to construct. And they're still finishing today. We've got all kinds of pieces of things here. We've got the roof of a church. We've got a base in Alberta. We've got rooms and hallways and dungeon control rooms. So if you'd like to come with me into Mr. Stryker's underground base. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I'll just close this door behind us. Yeah, jeez! <laughs> okay. It's very secret. Very secret underground base-like. Look at that. It's kind of creepy. Oh. It's the trouble with the movie. Nothing's real. You want in here? No. Where did this go? Doesn't sound like rock. Well, look, there's one of the writers, Mike Doherty. Did I mention him? Why aren't you writing? Uh, I, all right, I'll be back. Thanks. It's starting to bring everyone. This is for me. This is for Mini Me. <laughs> The movie comes out May 2nd, but I wanted to show you a small glimpse of what we're doing up here. I hope you like it. The next two, we know the world, we know the characters, so we can just have a hell of a lot more fun. going to be a bit more complex. I think that now we've introduced these characters, which we had to devote a good percentage of the first script to explaining who these characters are. And now that we've established that, we can see these characters in action. This film will be an evolution from the last film. Uh, it goes deeper into some of the characters and their journey uh, has a broader expanse in its aesthetic. It's a much bigger film. Stakes can be higher, the threat can be higher, I can introduce new characters, so many more places to go. I'm not as shackled as I was the, the first time. The action is extraordinary. The special effects are mind-blowing. It really has raised the bar. There is a very dramatic incident in Washington, D.C. And the story of our movie is how that crisis of the world now formally actively turning against the mutants. We're basically in the beginning of a, almost a war between mutants and humans. We encounter a man called William Stryker and he becomes my nemesis and for the rest of the X-Men in this story. Mr. Stryker, what are you doing trying to turn this into some kind of war? So we now have a, a sort of three-cornered conflict here. There's Magneto with his point of view here, Xavier with his, and then William Stryker, representing the hostile, antagonistic human world. Don't talk to me about war. This already is a war. At the end of X-Men 1, during the scene in the plastic prison when Xavier and Magneto playing chess. Magneto says, aren't you afraid that one day they'll come for you and for your children? What do you do when you wake up to that? I feel a great swell of pity for the poor soul who comes to that school looking for trouble. It's proved to be one of the climactic sequences in this film. You know what, I've run into a couple of people, fans from the first movie, they go, I want to see Wolverine really cut and loose, you know, really cut and sick. You get it in this scene. <laughs> I'm happy.
happy to say that pretty much everybody's back in the cast. Some people have grown up a little bit. And there's a couple of new characters. I play Nightcrawler, whose special thing is he can teleport. And he also has a tail and he's blue and his funny hoofs. Another exciting thing about this picture is it's a chance to explore some of the younger characters. And what I was very fond of in the first movie was it's not just a group of our heroes. There's a whole school full of gifted students. The ex-kids do get quite a featuring you know, role in this, and particularly the character of Iceman, Anna's character, Rogue, and Pyro. X2 is part of a saga. Each movie is not meant to be a complete whole. It's meant to be an episode, essentially. And, and there's something wonderful about that. You're part of X-Men 1, they get to be part of the sequel. And I think it's all in the hands of those great characters. We've arrived. People know who we are. And I have a strong sense that fans and cinema goers are really looking forward to what the leap forward is going to be now with this movie. So get ready. Doesn't it ever wake you in the middle of the night? The feeling that someday they will pass that foolish law and come for you and your children. Take you all away. It does indeed. I feel a great swell of pity for the poor soul who comes to that school looking for trouble.